You know, I'm kind of a frumpy guy, so I hate when I have to argue with Christians that are more attractive than me, you know, youthful faces, bright, shiny, white teeth, perfect hair, and they're like, I love Jesus, you just hate things. I'm like, well, I hate you. So I hate arguing with Christians who are more attractive than me, but luckily in this case, I don't have to. So thank you, Josh Furstein, for not being any more pleasant to look at than I am. You look like the offspring of Fred Durst and Wheezy Waiter. Hey guys, Josh Fierstein here. You know, the other day I had an atheist tell me that I was an idiot, moronic, and stupid for believing in God. I love the pronunciation there of believing in God. Just fun to say. Say it yourself. If you're sitting there at your computer, you're looking for something to do, you're bored, just say, believing in God. It's fun to say. Believing in God. Believing in God. Believing in God. See how much fun I'm having? That I was an idiot, moronic, and stupid for believing in God that he created this world because it took way too much faith to believe in a process like that while he believed in what he called the science of evolution. Well, let's go ahead and let's do this. Dear Mr. Atheist, first of all, let me correct you because evolution is not a science, never has, and never will be. Evolution's not a science? Who are you going to believe? The scientists who say it is? Or the fat bearded guy wearing a stupid hat who says it isn't? I mean, who the fuck appointed this guy the arbiter of what is and isn't science? Is he going to explain why it's not science? Well, he's going to try. Let's watch. Why? Because it cannot fit within the parameters and parentheses of science for one simple reason. It was never observed. That's why it's not science. That's why it's called the theory of evolution. First of all... It has been observed. Even most creationists will admit that it's been observed, at least on what they call the microevolution scale, wherein they will admit that small changes can occur in small periods of time in life forms. But they won't admit that large changes could occur during large periods of time, as if the micro changes they've already admitted to wouldn't ultimately culminate in something vastly different than the original form. And as for your lame creationist stock reply that evolution is just a theory, I don't know how many fucking times it has to be explained to you people, but just go to notjustatheory.com and it will fucking walk you through why your statement is completely retarded. Here's a small excerpt. When scientists use the word theory, it has a different meaning to normal everyday use. In science, a theory is not a guess, not a hunch. It's a well-substantiated, well-supported, well-documented explanation of our observations. Some people think that in science, you have a theory and once it's proven, it becomes a law. That's not how it works. A theory never becomes a law. In fact, if there was a hierarchy of science, theories would be higher than laws. There is nothing higher or better than a theory. One man's theory. Now, let me show you how much faith it really takes to believe in evolution. You want me to believe that in some accidental cosmic bank, that out of that was created one cell, and from that one cell that all life springs, every plant, every animal, every single human being. Who said the Big Bang was accidental? You're obsessed with the concept of things being accidental in this video. I think you end up saying it something like 458 times. Accidental, accidental, accidental. How do you know what's accidental? Are you claiming that you understand the universe as your God would understand it simply because you believe in God? You think you're some kind of expert on all of existence and you have some deeper understanding than everyone else where you can make these sort of statements? You can't claim that it's accidental. You don't even know what accidental means in this fucking context. You don't, you literally don't even understand the meaning of the word when it's put in that sort of larger context of space and time. Because we human beings really only understand a lot about where we are, what we're experiencing, this here and this now. And you're trying to say that your knowledge goes vastly beyond that to where you know that the Big Bang was accidental. And second of all, the Big Bang did not like create a cell. 
The boom! A cell! No! The Big Bang was an ex a tremendous explosion of fucking energy, and over billions of years of cosmic evolution, form and structure emerged due to physical laws like gravity and electrical attractions and shit. I mean, we don't understand how all of that works. But that doesn't mean that you just get to step in and say, hey, because your understanding is incomplete, it must have been my Bronze Age fairy tale that was the answer all along. And third of all, evolution is not even concerned with the origin of life. I mean, it's concerned with it in a larger perspective, like if we understood where life came from, we would have a more thorough understanding of life, and therefore we'd probably understand more about evolution. But the theory of evolution does not directly address a biogenesis, the origin of life on Earth. And we don't know exactly how that happened, and there are many hypotheses out there. And you can consider your God hypothesis one of many. And it's not one that has a lot of evidence behind it. That's why people like me don't believe in it. Because when we examine it, as we have, because we grew up in a Christian culture, we're pressured to be Christians our entire lives, you don't think we investigate this stuff? We do. And we find it completely lacking. We find the evidence for it non-existent. And the only reason that you believe in it is because you don't have the same standard of evidence that we do. Your standard of evidence is, does it make me feel good inside? Does it give me a warm, fuzzy feeling deep in my heart? And if it doesn't meet that criteria, you're like, oh, well, fuck that. That can't be the truth. And that somewhere along the way, over years and years, we mysteriously and magically all develop different wills, and we all develop different characteristics and traits, all because we willed it in our... I mean... All because we willed it in our heads? Is that what you think the theory of evolution teaches? That all of the different personality traits came from, like, the will of animals? No. That's not what it is at all. It's a series of pressures that are created by the environment itself, by the laws of physics, by whatever operational mechanics are at work in the natural world. Okay? Those pressures are creating it. The earliest evolutionary writings by Darwin, Darwin proposed natural selection as the mechanism through which organisms change. It has nothing to do with the will of the organisms, like, I want to grow a tail now! Wow, now I got this cool tail! That's not how it works. No one is positing that. You don't even understand what you're fucking talking about. It's so funny to watch you get on camera and act like you're some kind of fucking expert. Hey, I fucking can disprove evolution. I'm not a scientist, but I know better than one, and here's why. Now listen to me prattle my fucking ill-informed bullshit in front of the masses. And since they're as dumb as I am, they'll sit there and click like and say, This guy's got a fucking point. No, his, his head comes to a point. That's what you're fucking thinking. You really think that everything came from one single cell? How much faith does that take? Now, I realize that you say that evolution is in science. And yet, if we go back to science, the one thing that science demands, if you maybe you've heard of the, something called the law of thermodynamics. The law of thermodynamics? That's not science. You fucking pulled that out of a Dungeons and Dragons book or something. If you roll seven with the law of thermodynamics in effect, all of your characters lose 10 HP. You're fucking fucking with me, dude. That ain't science. You're insane. Which means that chaos can never produce order. Look at the world that we live in. The sun goes up, the moon comes out. The sun goes up. The, you, the sun goes up. That's how it works. The sun goes up. The sun goes up. The sun goes up. This is not how it works. We're going around. We're spinning around. It only looks like the sun is coming up. We travel around the sun. We have years. We have days. We have seasons. The tide comes in and out. Everything works like a clock. It has order. 
You know, maybe if you were a sentient dinosaur, you'd feel the same way about your place on Earth. There's a perfect order. It's like a clock that was made for me. And then they look up and see the fucking meteor hurtling towards them like, oh, I guess God really doesn't give a shit. <laughs> it's not a perfect clock. It seems like one because you're privileged to live in this microscopic little fraction of the present. Okay? You're just spoiled by that perspective. If you had a further reaching cosmic perspective, you would see that the universe is a violent, hostile, and uncaring fucking place. And there's nothing about the laws of thermodynamics that say that you can't have order arise from chaos. It doesn't say that anywhere. Don't take my word for it. Just go read about thermodynamics away from the Christian blogosphere, okay? Leave the territory of the kiddie pool, wade into the deep end, and see what's actually going the fuck on. So let's think about what you're saying from just a logical, real-world application perspective. If science indeed contained this contradiction, where the law of thermodynamics says order can't emerge from chaos, but the primary cosmological model says that everything did arise from chaos. How can we reconcile these two things? We can't! Science is defeated! Science is destroyed! Now Christianity can reign again in a pure and good and righteous America. And the American flag unfurls and you stand proudly before it. And George W. Bush is made president for life. You see, you think it takes a lot of, of faith for me to believe in a God that created this world, a God that created order, and yet, what if I were to tell you that somewhere in Oklahoma, a tornado rolls through a junkyard full of a bunch of old cars, and, and somewhere on the other side of that tornado, out of that junk pile, it magically produces a perfectly red, shiny, working Lamborghini. You would tell me I was nuts. You would tell me that I had lost it. You would probably try to admit me into the psychiatric ward. Why? Because that is absolutely stupid. I mean, how much faith would it really take to believe something as idiotic as that? And yet that's exactly what science believes. So you're saying that if a tornado struck a junkyard and assembled a Ferrari, that is your analogy for evolution for cosmic evolution and biological evolution, which you're conflating into one thing, even though that doesn't make any sense. Well, to me, that sounds like a better metaphor for God. Some big, powerful thing that just creates complex structures at whim. Bam! Complex structure. Bam! Complex structure. Sounds a lot like the Christian God to me. Whereas evolution, both cosmically and biologically, that's a slow, arduous process. And by the way, the idea of complex structure just emerging randomly actually isn't that outrageous. You ever seen a fucking snowflake? You ever seen how intricate those fucking things are? There's scientific principles behind why a snowflake has its structure, just like there's scientific principles behind why you have your structure, why I have my structure, and why this entire universe has its structure. Science believes that in this accident came this perfectly working earth with human life and with people and animals and plants and, and seasons and days and hours and rotates, I mean, the atmosphere, everything in earth was created perfectly. And I'm telling you, that could never happen through an accident. We've already addressed your obsession with accident, but I think it's funny when you just start rattling things off that exist. Like... Look at all these things! Aren't they amazing? Isn't that proof of some divine presence lingering behind it all? Do you realize that's also the premise of the ICP song, Miracles, which contains such lyrics as fucking magnets, how do they work, and I don't want to talk to a scientist, you motherfuckers lying and getting me pissed? I'm sure you must have heard that song because it seems like it's your anthem. In fact, is that you, Violent J? Is that... No, Violent J is actually even uglier. Holy shit. Okay. Well, that was scary. If I was Violent J, I would keep the makeup on forever. Come get me, Juggalos! Come get me! No, seriously, Juggalos, it's okay. 
I'm down with the clown, bros. I'ma be down, I'ma be down, down with the clown till I'm dead in the gr See? I know your little song. We're cool. It's, it's okay. It was a joke. It was a joke, guys. It's okay. Violent J is a perfectly nice person. I like him. We've met several times. He sucked my cock. It had to be by intelligent design. So, dear Mr. Atheist, who really has to have a lot of faith today to believe in their theory? I believe in God because I've experienced him. I've felt him. So you've experienced it. You've felt him. Okay, that's good. That's fine. That's, that's all right for you. If that's what you choose to believe, that you have felt and experienced God, then you go off into your little private area, and you sit around and you contemplate that. Like, God is real and God loves me, and when I die, I'm going to go to a magical paradise in the sky. You want to believe that? Fine. You want to hook up with others who believe that? Fine. You want to fucking start basing society's decisions on that? Fuck you. No way. No fucking way. It didn't happen. But most of all, while driving through Yellowstone and, and Montana and so many of these natural reserves this week and looking at animals and looking at life, I don't know. I just can't look at all of that creation and say that it, it was an accident. You know, uh, we've already addressed the false dichotomy here about God or accident. Either it was God or it was an accident. Either it was God or it was meaninglessness. Either it was God or it was a life of abject despair. But you know, even if it was an accident, who gives a shit? Potato chips were an accident. It, some guy was kept saying, cut my potatoes thinner, cut my potatoes thinner. So the dude running the restaurant cut them super thin. And that was the first fucking potato chip. Oops. It was an accident. Croutons. Another accident. A lot of people watching this video were accidents. Oh yeah, baby, don't worry, I'll pull out. Oops, I didn't. Accident. Doesn't mean you have less worth. Doesn't mean that your life is meaningless. It just means that the circumstances that brought you about were pretty much fucking random. And we don't even know if that's true, but if it is true, so fucking what? Can't we just be happy that we're the result of the accident? Can't we just be happy that we get to have this moment of consciousness and experience when most stuff around us is just like, I'm a fucking couch. I don't get to experience shit. I'm a human being. I do get to experience things, but for a limited time only. And if it's thanks to an accident, then I give praise to a fucking accident. When I look at the word universe, it means una, which is one or singular. That's Latin, una verse. Verse means a spoken statement. So universe is one single spoken statement. I dare you to read Genesis 1. And in the beginning, God said, let there be. All God had to do was speak one single spoken statement and boom, the universe. I mean, that's really poetic and all, but I don't think the etymology of the word universe really matters here. I mean, all that would show is that the person who named the universe believed in God. It really doesn't show that God is real. And also, little caveat to that, that's not the etymology of the word universe. It means combined into one, whole. Uni does mean one. Verse actually was versus, which was turned, as in turned into one. All things contained in one thing. One word to describe the entirety of existence. Universe. Has nothing to do with a scriptural verse or a single spoken sentence. Nice little bit of sophistry, though. Gotta congratulate you on that. Sounds pretty cool when you say it. Too bad it's utter bullshit. I dare you, if you believe in God, if you believe that all of this stuff is nonsense and you have enough faith to stand up and say, I still believe in creationism. I still believe in a God that reigns above all. Then I ask you to take a moment and click share. Click share below or on the side of this video. And if you're not my friend already on Facebook, click my name at the top of this video and let's be friends. But guys, it's time for us to stand up, get loud, and get proud. Why do we let evolutionary uh, 
quote unquote science work its way into middle schools and preschools and colleges and universities around the world. That's nonsense. It takes too much faith to believe that junk. And yet, I say it's time for us to begin to believe in intelligent design, believe in God. As always, like and comment below. I want to hear your thoughts on this. God bless. Have a very, very beautiful day. The sad thing is that you're such a moron that even if some piece of evidence was produced that shows that evolution is true, I mean, there's plenty of pieces of evidence like that already, like the entire fossil record, retroviral DNA, all of modern fucking genetics, blah, blah, blah. You know, if you're not convinced by now, nothing is going to convince you. But even if some piece of evidence was found that was so obvious in its implications that even you had to admit evolution is real, you would just start going around saying, you know, it's amazing how God created evolution. It's amazing how God guided evolution. It's amazing how God uses evolution as a tool of creation. It's all quite obvious, if you really think about it. Because you're just endlessly flexible, endlessly adaptable up in there. It doesn't matter what facts come along to contradict you. You either distort them or you distort your own beliefs to go around them. And it's sickening and it's disgusting that people would watch this video and give it a like. I don't know what sort of brainless morons out there watched this and found anything cogent or worth hanging their hat on. But... All I would say is that you're either so blithely incurious about the world that you live in that it's almost criminal and you're wasting your fucking life, or you're so ignorant that you, you just are not even smart enough yet to know how stupid you are. I'm The Amazing Atheist. If you enjoyed this video or other videos on my channel, be sure to subscribe to my channel by clicking this annotation right here. And uh, that's pretty much it. Peace the fuck out. Some kind of expert on all of existence, and you have some deeper understanding than everyone else where you can make these sort of statements? You can't claim that it's accidental. You don't even know what accidental means in this fucking context. You don't, you literally don't even understand the meaning of the word when it's put in that sort of larger context of space and time. Because we human beings really only understand a lot about where we are, what we're experiencing, this here and this now. And you're trying to say that your knowledge goes vastly beyond that to where you know that the Big Bang was accidental. And second of all, the Big Bang did not, like, create a cell. The BOOM! A cell! No. The Big Bang was an ex a tremendous explosion of fucking energy and over billions of years of cosmic evolution, form and structure emerged due to physical laws like gravity and electrical attractions and shit. I mean, we don't understand how all of that works. But that doesn't mean that you just get to step in and say, hey, because your understanding is incomplete, it must have been my Bronze Age fairy tale that was the answer all you know, I'm kind of a frumpy guy, so I hate when I have to argue with Christians that are more attractive than me, you know, youthful faces, bright, shiny, white teeth, perfect hair, and they're like, I love Jesus, you just hate things. I'm like, well, I hate you. So I hate arguing with Christians who are more attractive than me, but luckily in this case, I don't have to. So thank you, Josh Furstein, for not being any more pleasant to look at than I am. You look like the offspring of Fred Durst and Wheezy Waiter. Hey guys, Josh Fierstein here. You know, the other day I had an atheist tell me that I was an idiot, moronic, and stupid for believing in God. I love the pronunciation there of believing in God. Just fun to say. Say it yourself. If you're sitting there at your computer, you're looking for something to do, you're bored, just say, believing in God. It's fun to say. Believing in God. Believing in God. Believing in God. See how much fun I'm having? That I was an idiot, moronic, and stupid for believing in God that he created this world because it took way too much faith to believe in a process like that while he believed in what he called the science of evolution. Well, let's go ahead and let's do this. Dear Mr. Atheist, first of all, let me correct you because evolution is not a science, never has, and never will be. Evolution's not a science. Who are you going to believe? 
the scientists who say it is, or the fat bearded guy wearing a stupid hat who says it isn't? I mean, who the fuck appointed this guy the arbiter of what is and isn't science? Is he going to explain why it's not science? Well, he's going to try. Let's watch. Why? Because it cannot fit within the parameters and parentheses of science for one simple reason. It was never observed. That's why it's not science. That's why it's called the theory of evolution. First of all, it has been observed. Even most creationists will admit that it's been observed, at least on what they call the microevolution scale, wherein they will admit that small changes can occur in small periods of time, in life forms. But they won't admit that large changes could occur during large periods of time, as if the micro changes they've already admitted to wouldn't ultimately culminate in something vastly different than the original form. And as for your lame creationist stock reply that evolution is just a theory, I don't know how many fucking times it has to be explained to you people, but just go to notjustatheory.com and it will fucking walk you through all along. And third of all, evolution is not even concerned with the origin of life. I mean, it's concerned with it in a larger perspective, like if we understood where life came from, we would have a more thorough understanding of life, and therefore we'd probably understand more about evolution. But the theory of evolution does not directly address a biogenesis, the origin of life on Earth. And we don't know exactly how that happened. And there are many hypotheses out there. And you can consider your God hypothesis one of many. And it's not one that has a lot of evidence behind it. That's why people like me don't believe in it. Because when we examine it, as we have, because we grew up in a Christian culture, we're pressured to be Christians our entire lives, you don't think we investigate this stuff? We do, and we find it completely lacking. We find the evidence for it non-existent. And the only reason that you believe in it is because you don't have the same standard of evidence that we do. Your standard of evidence is, does it make me feel good inside? Does it give me a warm, fuzzy feeling deep in my heart? And if it doesn't meet that criteria, you're like, oh, well, fuck that. That can't be the truth. And that's somewhere along the way over years and years why your statement is completely retarded. Here's a small excerpt. When scientists use the word theory, it has a different meaning to normal everyday use. In science, a theory is not a guess, not a hunch. It's a well-substantiated, well-supported, well-documented explanation of our observations. Some people think that in science, you have a theory and once it's proven, it becomes a law. That's not how it works. A theory never becomes a law. In fact, if there was a hierarchy of science, theories would be higher than laws. There is nothing higher or better than a theory. One man's theory. Now, let me show you how much faith it really takes to believe in evolution. You want me to believe that in some accidental cosmic bank, that out of that was created one cell, and from that one cell that all life springs. Every plant, every animal, every single human being. Who said the Big Bang was accidental? You're obsessed with the concept of things being accidental in this video. I think you end up saying it something like 458 times. Accidental, accidental, accidental. How do you know what's accidental? Are you claiming that you understand the universe as your God would understand it simply because you believe in God? You think you're...